welcome to 10 questions my brother hey jimmy thank you for having me on man I've, i'm excited to be here oh man it's great to have you on big fan of your channel um one of the people that i've kind of watched since i got into doing this whole thing so um, i'm excited to have you here so will we're just going to jump straight into this thing and the first question is always the same what or who got you into comics um I, I kind of fell into it. Uh, I've never been, I was never a big comic collector, um, but because of the pandemic kind of, and having a little bit more time to see a bunch of people posting stuff, even though I was still working uh, full time, uh, it allowed me to find a bunch of different people. Um, and really, I would say, I guess, Funko Pops. Funko Pops is well, what, what That was actually going to be my next question. Was <laughs> like, <clears throat> like, you've always got Funko Pops back mm -hmm. there was it comics or was it funkos like what you know what came first the chicken or the egg <laughs> uh fungo pops yeah fungo pops came first and then channels like wink um and then getting into uh like dj found dj's channel and everything like that um it was really those guys that i saw were doing like well, wink and then even franchise kicks doing the mystery box uh comic book stuff that's what led me into doing the comics and then uh a boy fell in love <laughs> Yeah, it happens, right? No, it yeah. happens. So uh, this is something I've always wanted to ask because I haven't had like a really huge Funko Pop collector on here, somebody that was really into Funko. So I want to know, like, what is it about Funko Pops that draws you, um, you know, to those? Now, that's a rabbit hole I've tried to avoid, okay, is the Funko Pops. Like, I have some, and I generally get them autographed because I like chasing autographs. Mm -hmm. So, but what is it about Funkos that, that you dig? I think it's like for me, it was chasing the brands, like the the Marvel stuff. I, I'm a, I'm a, I love Marvel. I love uh, some. I love Star Wars, and those behind me, Marvel and Star Wars, are the two predominant ones. Uh, but I think the 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 draw into it are the exclusives, kind of like comic books. Like you get a you have a chance for an exclusive that's a 250 print run. Well, that you, they do that where there's a limited print, and then the convention exclusives, getting the the con stickers, uh, which my wife and I did some box battles and it was like the first convention with the pandemic. It was uh, Emerald City Comic Con back in 2020, like right before everything shut down. We got a box from Stop, Pop and Roll and it was for the convention stuff. And she landed the Darth Vader or the Boba Fett, right? Is it the Boba Fett? Yeah, it was the Boba Fett from that convention that had the con sticker. And it was like that that that's what drew me into it was trying to get the the brands and then they come out with like the uh the retro one so i got a my pet monster one that's up there because that was that was my thing back when i was little was my pet monster and stuff well no that's one of the things like when i first started really started watching youtube right i think we all started watching franchise kicks at some point because <laughs> um you know he's constantly recommended to you right mm -hmm. so and, and plus, Clint's got a good way about him on, on camera. You know, like, he's not hard to watch. And um, But that was one of the things that was kind of cool. Like, even when I started my YouTube channel, I was unboxing everything, right? Anything, I was just doing unboxings because I thought right. that was easy. It's what I had seen. Um, and I could kind of get my feet wet, you know, in the YouTube game doing that. And I did think it was cool. Like, all these chases, like, the you know, these really kind of rare pops and there was one that I was kind of looking for at the time. And I started because I live close to Cincinnati, like Cincinnati is two and a half hours away from me. So um, we go to Reds games a lot. And one of the most rare pops is this King Griffey Jr. Like gold bobblehead or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like one of the most. Do you like that? The chase aspect of it, like the ones that are super rare. Do you try to find those or buy those mystery boxes to go after that? Oh, yeah. that That's one of the ones. And like that's where on Instagram. Cause I, I would do like the, the chrono toys, but they're putting out hundreds of boxes. So your chance to win those is very slim. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would, I started going on Instagram and seeing people that would, uh, sell on Instagram. They would do smaller box runs, people in the community. I came across this one company. Um, it was a pop shelf or something like that. I can't remember, but they would always do 10 to 15 boxes with one big hit. And I tried it out and I landed at the time, I think it was what the, um, it was the crusty, the crusty, the clown. I hit the crusty, the clown, which at that time, that was a, a couple hundred dollar Funko pop. And I'm like, oh, wow, it's not one that's going to be in my collection. But the fact that you have a chance, there's more of an intimate chance, uh, you know, with, with only a 10 to 15 box run, even a 25 box run, you have better odds. And I end up hitting the black and the black and white glow in the dark Deadpool out of one, which that thing's over five. It was like a $300 pop at the time. And the boxes were $45. I'm like, 
there's 10 of them, I'll buy two. And I hit that one and we got another good one out of the box as well. So that, I like that aspect. Yeah, you're chasing, same with the comics. Like if yeah, somebody puts up a grail, uh, I'll use I'll use uh, the only mystery boxes I've ever bought from Torpedo was when they dropped the Journey into Mystery uh, 83 and 84 boxes. You know, the first Jane Foster and for obviously first Thor. I'm like, well, first Thor, 83 is my holy grail. That, right. That's the book I will take a second mortgage on my house to get. But yeah, seeing those, a company I would never buy from, I took a chance. And it's always that that chase that you're chasing that grail, that holy grail. That that's always the fun part about it. No, it is. That is the fun part. It's kind of like gambling, but you get something out of it, right? right? I mean, you still get something. Do you when you get stuff, if like say you hit one of these big hits, are you do you resale at all? Or uh, you know, I know that you do whatnot, and that's actually one mm -hmm. of my questions down here in a second, but like do you um do you resell a lot of stuff or do you mainly keep what you get? If it's stuff I collect, like with Thor, um, I, I got out of a choo-choo box. I got the uh, what if number 10, which I don't care who you are. I'll fight you on it. That is, in my opinion, Jane Foster's first appearance as Thor. Um, but I got that. That's a PC book. I mean, if it's something that I collect, um, it's a PC book. If it's something that I'm like, eh, do I really collect it? I'll look to maybe, again, one of the ways to fund the hobby is, taking something that may not fit my PC and, and selling it to get some of that money back. Cool. All right. So let's move to question two. So the comic book thing, you just kind of really fell into, right? You said here during the pandemic, you were watching YouTube, you kind of fell into that. Now, have you become a reader of comics at all or, or do you just primarily collect? I, I read my, my pool list is for reading purposes. I got two short boxes here of stuff I have to catch up on reading because I'm trying, I was trying at the beginning, trying to read it all. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I gotta, I gotta limit myself on what I'm reading, but I've got a, a handful of series that when they come out, I've got to read them that week. I don't want to wait on them. Other ones I'm like, all right, I might let it get a few issues and then read a chunk of them. But yeah, I, I read and collect, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm huge on the reading part. Yeah, because I always say, you know, I'm a reader who collects, right? I like to read, I buy stuff, and I end up with just short boxes surrounding me here. You know, like I'll be short boxes, long boxes. I've got up this massive collection just because I like to read. Right. And then ultimately, I'll keep them for a while, and then I'll resell, maybe do a mystery box or something just to try to move some stuff out and maybe get it to a home that um, that people love. Did you ever have anybody in your family who collected? Like, was it like a mom, dad, aunt, uncle, anybody like that? Not comics. It was always like my dad got me into sports cards. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the sports cards was the big thing. And we had a tradition where, because I played, I played travel ball. Uh, so if we went to a new city for a baseball tournament, it was my dad would be like, when we drive around, because that was before we had, you know, obviously the internet and stuff like that. Uh, we would drive around. If he saw like a, a, a hobby shop, we would go there. It would be a point of, hey, after your games today, we're going to go. And we're going to go spend some time doing that. And then every Sunday we'd go to breakfast and then we would go to the, uh, uh, the flea market and I would get, they had bags of cards and stuff, but cards was, was the big thing in our family growing up collecting comics. You, not so much. Do you still do the cards? Do you still like baseball cards, basketball cards, anything like that? Oh man. Um, it's a heartbreaking story. I, I fell in love with this girl in high school and, uh, I, you know, I, I don't I mean, I look back and I wish if I had a time machine to go back and you know how people say, if you could go back and tell your younger self something, I would, I would beat the snot out of myself and be like, do not let this girl Cause I had tubs. You, you brought up Ken Griffey. I had a placard that my dad got me one year for my birthday that had Ken Griffey Jr. And Ken Griffey Sr.'s cards in it signed because they were the only father son duo that ever played with each other. And Ken Griffey was one of my favorite players growing up because he was one left-handed and I just loved his swagger. I just loved how smooth of a swing he had. And I always tried to be, because being a lefty, I always tried to swing like Ken Griffey. Uh, but um, yeah, stuff like that. I had um, bag, uh, what Jeff Bagwell's rookie card signed because being here in Tampa, the Yankees have their preseason facility like 15 minutes away from where I used to live. So during spring ball, we'd go over there and we'd watch you know, Houston come in, Cleveland come in. I had so many autographs that I was with this girl. Wool was over my eyes. I was in love with her. The first girl I fell in love with, her parents were doing a yard sale. She took the tub of stuff and sold it for an ungodly low amount of money. And I was like, 
I love you, I guess. I'm like, uh, but looking back at it now, I'm like, if I could have kept that stuff to give to my kids, just the value of you seeing some of these cards and everything is is just crazy. No, and like I have a ton of sports cards too. Like that was really as far as like my first collecting, mm-hmm. you know, for Ray. Like what I really got into was trading cards because I've said it many times. My uncle, you know, sold at the flea market, and you know, it was right. what he sold was ball cards and comic books. And so I kind of got to be around it. But I have tons of cards, and so no, I would die. Like, like I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of good stuff, you know, card wise. Now I still collect some today, but it's always Kentucky stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I collect Kentucky guys. But I want to venture into this. So you're down there in Tampa. You've got the spring trainings. Do you ever go like still today? Do you head out to the spring trainings? I, I haven't. I haven't gone. I think it's been a good five or six years since the last time I've gone to one of the uh, one of the spring ball games down there. Oh, I would um, love to do that. Like I think that would be fun to go. Yeah, to spring it's it's, it's a lot of fun, and that's like I want to do it with my son, like because we've gone to the Rays, we've gone to Tropicana Field. Sorry. Um, no, you're fine. We've, we've, uh, we've gone down to the stadium. Um, I haven't taken him to a football game yet, but my daughter, uh, w- her growing up, it was we would go down, we'd see preseason games uh, for the Bucks whenever Cleveland would come into town because it was every year Cleveland would come down here uh, being a Cleveland fan. So that was always nice. But, yeah, it, it's, it's great because about an hour and a half away is the Blue Jays' um, place. You've got also down in that area, the Pirates are down there. So – it's so great. That's one of the great things growing up as a kid, you know, doing it. But I haven't been in a few years. Regular season games, yeah, we go to Tropicana all the time. Yeah, no, that's what we we kind of go to Cincinnati um, at least, I don't know, probably nine, ten times a year, yeah. you know, because it's about two and a half hours away, but it's an easy drive. And, you know, you go up there and stay on the river. There's a bunch, a bunch of stuff to do there. Right. And especially back in the day, like you said, when Junior was there, um, we used to go a lot because I love King Griffey Jr., like loved him, right? And then my dad – was a, a huge Big Red Machine fan. Like, the, you know, mm-hmm. when the Reds, like Pete Rose and Dave Concepcion, Tony Perez, all those guys, man. I mean, like, we used to go up there a ton and watch uh, and watch the Reds. So that's fun. All right, so question three is, like, what brought you to YouTube? Like, I know why I'm here. Like, why are you here? Like, what brought you over here? So I started the Average Will channel, I want to say it was in 2011, I believe. Uh, where I started to support some buddies who were big into video games because back then it was it was huge where you had guys that were doing the video game thing. They were doing um, a lot of the vlog stuff. Collectibles wasn't really big back then, but I was supporting some friends, so I created a channel so I can go in, comment on their videos, like, and all that fun stuff. And then I came across um, Shay Carl, and um, his he did a family vlog and everything. Well, he started doing a weight loss thing. Uh, it's where he would do a weight loss challenge. And I'm like, oh, you know, I, I need to lose weight. I need to get healthier. Um, so back then you could do a video response, which I wish they would bring that back. You could respond to a person um, w- with a video. So anytime they did their weigh-in, their weigh-in updates, I would do mine, do a video for it and put it in. And that kind of rolled into a series I started called the Fat Man Diaries where on again, off again, I do really good. I lose like 40 pounds and then you know, just with how crazy work is, I'd end up gaining it back and everything because I do a lot of fad stuff. So that was kind of my thing back then. I kind of fell off of it. And then by watching people like franchise and seeing people unbox stuff, and I'm like, oh, I could do that. Why not? You know, I'll have some fun with it. Uh, so that's that's really where I got into the unboxing part of it. And that just kind of blossomed into the different stuff like doing. I had the What We Get Wednesday live stream I would do every Wednesday to talk about what I picked up at the comic store and all that fun stuff. And it's just kind of naturally progressing into things where I feel like I'm getting into a spot now with, with what I want to do here. That's interesting. So how long ago, like when did you post your first YouTube video? Like how long have you been on? Oh, was it in February, 2020? It was right. It was right when I was doing my friend, cause I'd seen people and I hadn't unboxed anything at this point. And I did a return with Amazon uh, for a few hundred dollars for an electric fence for the dogs. And they said, hey, keep the product. We're going to send you a new one, and we're going to refund you. I don't know why they did that way, but I'm like, oh, cool. I have a few extra hundred dollars. Sure. So I bought the kids something on Amazon. I, the wife got some stuff, and then I'm like, I I had seen um, they had a recommendation for like one of those little $15 novelty junk, essentially junk, mystery boxes. I'm like, what is that? So I researched that on YouTube, and that's what actually put me down the rabbit hole. Um 
to to get into this stuff. And I saw I would like I Googled or YouTube searched uh, Amazon mystery boxes. I'm like, I'll order some of those. So I got them, shot the videos. Uh, they were not great. <laughs> the way I used to shoot them, it was it was more like a side profile. I I unbox them here and show the camera and do that <laughs> stuff. And it was uh, it was rough. It was rough. Now, I'm the only channel that it started out better than it is now because my daughter used to help me, um, mm. and she's really good at that stuff. She ran, like, yeah. the the school TV station at her school and middle school, oh, so awesome. she knew how to edit and, and do all that stuff. So she was at my – I'm the only channel that it got worse as it went on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, no, so I want to talk a little bit about – so when you started the YouTube channel, you said you were doing something called the Fat Man Diaries. Was that before yeah. you started doing uh, the comic book stuff? Like, did, yeah. in February 2020, that's when you started doing that? Yeah, so I, I was doing the Fat Man Diaries way back in 2012, 2011, 2012. I mean, okay. 20, I would say about 2012, I think. Uh, I ended up like a schmuck not realizing, hey, when you delete your videos, you lose all your watch time and your views. Mm -hmm. So I deleted all of my Fat Man Diaries stuff when I really was like, you know what? I really like doing unboxing stuff. Uh, but yeah, I started doing the, the Amazon unboxings and then it became Funko Pop unboxings. Um, I would say end of February, 2020. And then I think it was in April when I really got into the, the comic book side of things. Cool. So was YouTube very different? Like you were back in 2011, 2012, were you posting videos then? Like you were actually posting videos for yeah, the I was, Batman Diaries thing? Yep. I was doing a daily vlog, you know, just kept pretty much just me holding my camera as I'm walking, either at walking at the park or if I'm working out just like little blurbs like that. And just talking about boring everyday stuff like oh sure. hey oh i'm good i ate this today i did this here's the workout i'm doing stuff like that that were between five and ten minutes um vlog style stuff well how, how different was youtube back then like i probably i mean i always watched youtube a little bit but really until the past couple of years when i started doing this is when i actually started watching youtube you know and all the yeah. different content on it like how different was it back then uh, versus how it is today it seemed like, I mean, in, 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 this is just my opinion. It seemed like mm -hmm. it was more network friendly in that aspect again, because you have the, and I know there was, explo I know people exploited the whole, uh, you know, sub for sub or, or your sub box and stuff like that, where you had like your subscriber box on how the whole layout was. And then again, the video responses, I think that's a great way for smaller channels who really like big channels that, or even like us in the community here this time we can do responses to each other and kind of even make it like a game kind of you know in in a respectful way and i think that was one of the things they took away because people obviously the toxic part of it people getting you know doing inappropriate things towards others through their response videos but that's that's a real big difference and then i think content wise or at least i guess it's because what i watched then content wise there wasn't a lot of this stuff the collectible stuff in it it was more of the the games are there was there was some art stuff like the doing CAD stuff because that's that was my jam back in the day is doing AutoCAD stuff and design. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, layout wise, it's a little bit different, but not not too crazy different. Yeah. So question four is like uh, talk to people about what you do on your channel. Like I watch your channel. Um, it, it's from time to time. I, I usually listen to your channel, but sometimes I can catch you on live or something like that. But talk about the different uh, content that you're doing. And then I want to talk about a new show uh, that you've got coming out. And I, I want to know, learn a little bit about that. So talk to me a little bit about what you're doing right now. Yeah. So uh, right now, I mean, I used to do unboxings. It was, I would do Tuesday, Thursday. That was used, my, that used to be my uploads. And then I just with work and everything, and I got burnt out on mystery boxes. I really scaled it back and was doing different, you know, just wasn't, I guess I wasn't in love with it as much as I used to be. I wasn't having as much fun because just getting tired of the mystery boxes. So I kind of reconfigured and I'm like, you know what, let's do, I, I, I want to upload. I'm actually uploading more now than even what I was back before where I was doing the Tuesday, Thursday, doing my Wednesday live stream and stuff like that. And then even the Saturday sit down that I did for a little bit. And then I, I stopped that just because of schedule wise. But uh, right now I do like a mystery, kind of like a mystery box Monday where, I, where I'm doing the different mystery boxes on Monday. And then Wednesday is because I, I really enjoy them. I, I see the different people, uh, comic book poser. You do your month, you know, like the hot keys of the week and covers, uh, you know, Bruce and Stephanie. Bruce does his books to look out. Comic book poser does his. Uh, who else is it? There's, there's so many different channels that do that kind of thing of, Hey, these are the books that are coming out this week. And I'm like, I want to do something like that. So I don't want to do top five. I don't want to do top 10. Let's do a top three. So that's my, 
my Wednesday video is more of a, these are the top three books I'm really looking forward to reading this week, kind of, to, to kind of get that engagement. And then my Friday, I just started it back up this past Friday, or um, back in, you know, a couple weeks ago, where I wanted to do a feature Friday, where I reviewed a, uh, a series, and really just kind of do it. And again, I'm doing these because it's, this is the fun part for me. It's more of, I don't have to get burnt out on the, the comic books, the mystery boxes. I mean, I can do other stuff I enjoy and I'm actually having fun recording these versus how I was back when I was doing the mystery boxes. Right. And that makes sense. Cause I think a lot of us go through that, right? I mean, you know, the mystery box thing is an easy entry right into mm -hmm. the YouTube world. It's something you, as you try to navigate what this is. Um, and then I think it eventually, you know, as your channel grows and as things expand and change, you get into different things, more what you enjoy and you find an audience that enjoys that as well. And you get to share that with them. And I think that's the fun part about YouTube is, is the connectivity part where, you know, you're, cause like I do the first appearances and key issues, right? I do mystery box Monday. Now I give those boxes away, right? Just as right. a thank you to the people who are supporting me, I give those away. And then first appearances and key issues. Why well, I like that stuff. I research that stuff anyway. I'm buying, I collect first mm -hmm. appearances. I'm buying that. So it really kind of evolves. And that's one of my favorite things. And I know you you do a show or had, did a show, and I think you're still doing it from time to time like this. I think it was like a Saturday deal, right? Where yeah. you're kind of doing the interviews. Yeah, Saturday sit down, which is going to be coming back. Um, and, and it's where I would just get different people and and again, I like this environment. I like the whole sit down. I like, and, and your show, This 10 Questions, is what kind of spawned that for me, seeing this and then seeing some others bring people on. I know uh, people like Wink, he would do that where he would do, he would have guests on his, when he did his Sunday live streams, he'd have guests. I was lucky enough to be a guest a couple times, but I like that. I like this, this relaxed environment. And that's, that's all I, that's all I look to do here on this channel is I, I'm not going to be crazy and in your face and pushing pushing different things. It's more of a laid back kind of relaxed, chill thing. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do it to where I brought on creators because getting into collecting and having, having publishers, Scout Comics is two and a half hours away from me. Mad Cave is, you know, a, 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 a tank, one tank drive south of me to go, you know, and that, that was what was exciting for me. It was like, oh my God, these publishers. And then I started reaching out to them uh, and talking with them. And then I think that's what really got me excited about doing something like this, like a Saturday sit down, because they're so they're they're easily connected. You know, you can you can reach out to them on Instagram. And that was really cool about doing it to have different folks on um, Jay Douglas writes. He did parallel. That's a phenomenal story. And right, having but... him on the show, I try to keep it 30 minutes. But then I think I realized I'm like 30 minutes is just I don't I feel like there's just such a hard stop at that 30 minutes. So going into the future, when I bring it back officially, it's just going to be kind of like, it's going to be organic. We're going to sit here, we're going to talk, try to keep it at a specific time, but more of a, hey, if we hit that time, oh, well, if we're having a good time, you know, we'll keep going with it. But yeah, that'll be coming back here in the spring. Yeah, no, I always enjoyed that. You know, I mean, when you would do that, and I like, I think it's interesting with the creators, like uh, the Douglas fella, Gary B had him on his channel. Yeah. And uh, and we talked to him and he was he's such a great guy. So personable. Um, and it, it, the thing that's kind of amazed me, I haven't got into the creator side, like the comic book creator side. But even I just noticed that a lot of these guys are willing to sit down and talk, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, which I think is cool. It's one of the cool things about this community is even like the big YouTube channels. I've had on some of the biggest YouTube channels, you know, in our in the comic book community on 10 questions. Yeah. And they were super cool. They were just like, yeah, dude, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, I was yeah. like, okay. Like, I was just shocked. Uh, when I asked Jim Man, I thought for sure he was just going to ghost me. And he, no, he immediately responded, yeah, dude, I'd love to come on. I was like, okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> That's, but isn't that cool, though? Like, how this community is, is how everybody's just willing to kind of jump on and talk and hang out. Well, and that's, and that's the thing that is so attractive to, to, with the community is we are, we are accessible, you know, and every, you know, for the most part, you know, and that, that's one of the coolest thing is like Brian Hawkins. I love, uh, he's the writer for black cotton and he's done some others. I jumped on one of his Kickstarters. Um, and he's one that I've talked to multiple times. He's going to be a future guest because I love what he's done with black cotton. And the fact that before I got into the whole comic book thing, I'm like, 
there's no way these writers and these artists are going to want to talk to people, any of these guys. And then when you actually get to meet them as well, like uh, going to Megacon, Megacon was awesome because I got to talk to, I got a chance to talk to Tyler Kirkham and have a, have a nice little conversation with him, which again, he's a big artist and it's like, yeah. holy crap, here we are. I'm, I'm having a conversation with him and just being able to talk to him and, and Jay Lee over whenever he was at Oasis booth, I talked to him for a little bit and it's, it's cool that they are, open to there it's not like not not like a snob thing but it's like oh i just don't have time you know i I don't have enough time um but it's really cool that they are so accessible and they're willing to like you said come on shows and everything and i think that's that's one of the greatest things you know i know it was that's part of it c2e2 was the first con i'd ever really been to right like big cons first thing i'd ever been to and i was just shocked at how friendly these artists and writers were these are people that i'm reading your work like you know i'm, I'm reading your stuff i'm a fan of of you that is sitting here and they just sit and talk like they've known you their entire lives like one of the coolest things was i got an autograph line for chris claremont mm-hmm. and you know to me his x-men run is is like the pinnacle right like i love chris claremont's X-Men, x-men run and he was cool as he could be he would just sit and talk to anybody like i mean and talk about the books i mean he loves it as much as we do Right. Um, and that's just so cool. I think it's one of the cool things about this hobby. Yeah. Jim Shooter was the same way. Cause my LCS, uh, he had Clayton Crane on his last round, but I was, uh, I was out of town. So I wasn't able to do, uh, to be there for that. But, um, Jim Shooter, when Jim Shooter was in town, uh, it, it was cool because literally he'll sit there and he'll talk to you. Cause he's a Pittsburgh guy. My mom, my fa- I have family from Erie, Pennsylvania, the Pittsburgh area as well. So just talking to him about the Pittsburgh area, talking to him about just that kind of stuff. And again, he'll sit there and have a 20, 30 minute conversation with you. And then he'll have like his handler will be next to him. Be like, oh, OK, we, we got a line here. We got to yeah, like, move on. Yeah. Yeah. And and another one was Sam De La Rosa. Anytime I could if I know Sam De La Rosa is going to be at, at something, I'll go because he's one that he's another one. He'll sit there and talk to you. And, and again, so personable, just so willing to share their stories and everything like that. It's, it's amazing. No, it is. It's really cool. So talk to me about the Thursday Thoughts. Like, this is a new show. I know you were getting ready to premiere it. Uh, yeah. Something happened that you weren't able to do that. But, like, talk to me a little bit about that show and what, what that's going to be about. Yeah, so the premiere was supposed to be uh, February 3rd. Uh, but, unfortunately, with that um, work called, you know, because that and that's one of the things of why I moved my what, I, what we get Wednesdays from Wednesdays to a, a Sunday. Because work, the, the week, it could be crazy. I've got guys in the field. If they're calling me, they need something. Um, or if I have a client that needs something taken care of. So it kind of sometimes bogs me down. But I wanted to do a, a another show. Uh, again, just kind of changing up the content and getting into these these talk style videos or live streams. And Thursday Thoughts, it came to me. It's like um, I, I kind of was working on it. And then uh, Wink, Alex brought in, you know, brought out his videos. I'm like, son of a gun. I'm like, I, I knew I should have did my stuff first. I'm like, now, I, but, but it's like, you know, what? I don't care. We're going forward with it. And, you know, I can piggyback off of those and we can continue the conversations because that's the whole purpose of Thursday mm-hmm. thoughts is to have a conversation. It's going to be like a town hall style. I'm going to probably have a couple guests on with me, but then I'm going to invite people too. If you're in the chat and you want to come hang out, I'm all for that. I love I love those style videos where we can have a conversation where it's just a group of people, some friends that are talking about different topics. The first topic is going to be the age old conversation of what's a cameo, what's the first appearance, you know, what, you know, what's the difference between them kind of like that stuff, because I love, I love different opinions. I love people who can respectfully have an opinion different than mine and we can talk about it. I'm all game for that. Um, so that, that's essentially what Thursday thoughts is going to be. It's going to be the, a, a, a talk style live stream where we just hang out, we have a good time and we talk about different topics in the community that come up. Well, cool. Well, let's make this question five and let's talk about this. This is a topic that's been up in the community. Uh, we'll, we'll practice Thursday thoughts right now. So <laughs> this has been a, a topic that's been a bunch of videos. I was part of a live stream on this topic. Wink was, um, DJ Taylor did one that kind of got some heat. Um, and that is the, uh, the mystery boxes, Mm -hmm. you know, there was a particular mystery box that was sold. Very disappointing. sounds like it was a guy's first foray. He just screwed up. Um, and you know, but that brought about this discussion based on Wink's video, um, about what a mystery box should be like, what the expectations should be. 
So yeah. let's kind of walk, because you do mystery boxes, I do too. So let's oh, kind of yeah. walk through that. Like if you're buying a $25 to $50 mystery box, what are your expectations for that? If I'm if I'm buying something like that, you obviously value. You want to get what you're paying out, but you want my thing is like if something like that, um, I like I like the the little twists and stuff like that. I think that those are nice ones. Um, and I know in one of the rebuttals to Wink's thing it was Comic Vantage was used quite a bit. Well, yeah, Comic Vantage is going to give you five books. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to get your book value. They're $40. They're $40 shipped, something like that. So you know going into those. Um, and as you get higher with the price points, do I think you should be at value or higher? Should you have guaranteed value? Yes, if it's advertised. If you advertise guaranteed value, you better believe that box should hit that guaranteed value. Now, that's a tricky game because we've seen books will jump up from being a $3 book to a $100 book overnight. Um, and then, you know, it's just by a rumor, you know, somebody drops a, oh, a source says that this character is going to be potentially mentioned even. Um, so it's, it's going to be, it's for me, it's, I like to do the, the ones that are fun that are, if it's, if it's a GP, like if it's, uh, if it's got anything Thor GP for me, I'm going to try it. No one go in there. Hey, I'll get some stuff. If it's PC stuff for me, great. If it's not, I'd like to get value. Am I asking for 20 plus percent over value? That, that's a big ask. That is a big ask. I understand. I understand people doing the boxes and selling them, being like, hey, you know, uh, I'm I'm putting these boxes together that say they're gonna be a $50 price point. They're gonna be what 20% over. I did one box run, and I think my boxes were $60 shipped. And I tried to make everything at least $80 or more just because it was my first one. And I'm, I'm not looking to do this multiple times. I'm like, I'll make them fun. Had a bunch of stuff thrown in there. And one of the books in there was a the first appearance of the the Black Superman. I cannot remember his name. Um, it was Earth 2 or something like that. Oh, Earth yeah, 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 yeah. Superman. Yeah. And it literally, I put that in there as like a a early book you know i'm like yeah this this has at the time it was like a ten dollar book two days later michael b jordan got tied to it that oh he's gonna be the new superman and that book started skyrocketing I'm like well whoever got that mystery box just got a big hit and didn't realize added on top of their other big hits um and i don't know when it comes to mystery box i'm all over the place and the fact that i I go into, a, if I'm buying a mystery box, I'm buying it for the potential one, either your business I love, like Rabbit Comics. I'm buying a bunch of their stuff because she's, they're putting value into their boxes. Yeah, and it's fire. Those covers are fire. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. And it's a lot of the stuff I collect. So, like, they're putting the We Live stuff in there. They're putting those covers in there by artists I love. I'm like, well, that's just a bonus. You know, so, uh, I mean, it's, when it comes to it, I'm more of a, eh, you know, I'd like it to hit value, um, but if you guarantee value, it better hit value. And I know the box that everyone was, that, that was the source of such a pain was the fact that they kind of priced them wrong. They looked at the wrong source. And that's another right. thing is too, is like with yours, I got one of your boxes and you did, you had the labels on the back of them that said, hey, last sold on eBay on this date for this price and stuff like that. That for me, I think, I know as much as people don't like eBay, that's the price point for me. It is. That's yeah. what it's selling for. That's what you can physically, you can pull a month data for it. You can go, hey, I want to look for the whole month of January, what this book sold for and get my price point there. And that's that's your true fair market value. You have all these apps, cover price, go collect. All of them are great. I, I'm subscribed to cover price, but they're not up to date with, you can go in and pull that raw data and get your fair market value for a specific book. I know I've started, and I wonder if you think this, because I started doing this, like, and I, I don't think I'm a great mystery box builder. Like, I try. It's more about moving stuff for me, mm -hmm. getting things out of my PC that I don't want. Maybe somebody else would dig it. Like, if I'm buying something like a $50 box, I, I don't, I just want it to be fun. Yeah. Right? Like, maybe have a book or two that I dig and maybe keep in my PC but I don't have any great expectations for those. Like, you know, just, I, I don't expect, you know, you're not going to get like a hammer book, you know, unless you get lucky. Uh, and something like you said, something jumps in price. Um, now, if I get into a $700 box, you better have my value. <laughs> you know, like it better uh -huh. be there. 
and I expected some pretty big hits. Yeah. Um, but as far as, and I know that guy, I think he screwed up using Go Collect, thinking that yeah. was just the normal price. And that's, there's a huge difference between slabbed and, and raw books. Mm -hmm. And that's a mistake. And he seemed to have owned up to that. Um, I started using like a combo deal where I would look at cover price, then I would go look at eBay and I would try to get an average in my mind about what I think this book's worth. So that if you look it up on a given day, I'm probably okay. Cause it is nerve wracking to build a mystery box and then you sell them and then you're scared that they're not going to come in at value, right? Like you're yeah. scared to death um, or that people are going to hate them. Now you're not going to like everything that's in a mystery box and that's fine. That's the game. That's the gamble. And like you said, if you're buying a torpedo box, you're essentially buying a lottery ticket. You're buying yeah. a raffle ticket for this big book. Um, but do you think that's a fair way to price, like to try to do like cover price and then look at eBay and then try to average? If, yeah. And again, if I do another box run um, or even if I do something on another platform uh, versus Instagram, um, that's probably the route I'll go. Cause again, it's nice to take, like I said, take that last 30 days, take the last month of it, see how the book's going. Um, and, and then, yeah, I mean, if there's only like one or two sales of that book, I would cover price would be my go-to next because again, it gives you kind of an idea there. And then, yeah, you can find that happy median for you to put on that book and comfortably be like, yeah, this is what I value this book at. But yeah, I mean, I did one box run and it was nerve wracking yeah. <laughs> selling them. It sold out fast. It sold out it was within 10, 15 minutes, which blew me away. I was like, holy crap. I only did 10, but for, I'm like, I figured it was going to go at least a day or two. I'm like, oh, I'm nobody on Instagram. Yeah. I have a, I have a nice little YouTube channel. That's a baby, but yeah, it blew me away. And then seeing the people post like on Instagram, um, they would do their things and just hearing their responses i was like okay i did a good job because <laughs> i was yeah. it was it was like oh my god here we go uh hide my face they're opening up one of the boxes and then to see the response i was happy with it for the most part on mine like the response has been pretty good and i've screwed up a couple times like where i mispriced a book yeah like for whatever reason i miss and that was early i was trying to figure out what i was doing because i'm one of those people that has to experiment mm -hmm. like i have to do something <laughs> to learn how to do it right. um and and so I screwed up a few times, but I think if I do another run, I've got a decent idea of how I need to go about it, you know, and, and that, but I, I thought that was an interesting discussion that was going on because there was more blowback on that wink video than I just didn't understand it. Yeah. And I, I think people, and one of the problem is I think it was because it came from, again, two folks who did a whole series, they do a whole series about putting a mystery box together and everything and about making it fun and whatnot. And then, the problem it comes is I think some things were taking out of context. I, I really do believe a couple things that were said were taking out of context. And I think that's where then it became defensive mode because people jumped into the chat of their, res their response stream and was kind of like, you know, Hey, let's talk about this, blah, blah, blah. And I think it became defense mode. And then again, they want to use another Avenue. It's like, yeah, that's a $40 box that you know you're going to get guaranteed value on, but this is a 700 box, the 700, 777, 77 of them. And the problem was, I think that one got off on the whole wrong foot because of the, the, the photos that were first shown. No, yeah, it was suspect. And, and, sure. and that's, and that's what drew, it was like, oh my God, these aren't even your photos. And then we had to have that whole clarity because somebody called him out on it. And for somebody who had, some other boxes that were smaller from eBay that were $200. I think Wink did a couple $200 boxes from the guy that were good. I think when you go from a 200 to a $700 box, that's a big step. It's a big jump. Yeah. Big step. And I'll use someone like Choo Choo. I've bought one time cause I keep missing out on his, uh, but Choo Choo does $500. And I think he's even doing a thousand dollar boxes, which he has one coming out sometime in March, but Choo Choo, who's a collector. And I think that's one of the things too, is he's a hardcore collector. I, I talked, to, I've talked to him multiple times from when he would show his stuff that he's picked up, like from little shows or his CGC unboxings. And I'm just like, we share a lot of the same interests on series. So we've talked about stuff and I feel comfortable spending $500 on his box because the value is going to be there. He, he packs his boxes with, great value. You, you're going to get a couple slabs. You're going to get, I think it was 10 raw books and the price value. I think I did for his, I think I did the whole, which I never usually do. I do the whole DJ links thing where I throw up the price values 
Um, and I think I was over $700 on his $500 box because I got a couple really nice slabs. Uh, I didn't get the GP like Erod. Erod got the beautiful GP, which was, I think, over $1,000 in value. But that's the thing is when you have collectors who are diehard collectors, um, you know, like Adrian APM. I mean, Adrian's someone who, if I want a nice put together box, that's yeah, it's going to be a little curated. Yes, it's going to be heavy handed towards what I like because that's what Adrian does if he's doing a curated box for you. So he's been one I've thrown, comfortably thrown $250, $350 to. He did a birthday box for me last year that was amazing. You know, I couldn't believe the different stuff that I had in there. And those are guys that I would gladly throw. And that's where I'm a little bit le more leery to some of these other bigger boxes that I was like, yeah, I'll let other people buy them. I'll watch their videos. I'll go, you know, I'll buy some boxes that are going to be for a hundred, two hundred dollars But when we start going over $200, I'm very selective on who I want to throw my money behind. No, absolutely. I think that's completely fair. And that has been an interesting conversation um <clears throat> the last few weeks and what you know what people expect because like you said those guys you know it was foo and squatchy and then we're talking and good guys and squatchy builds a killer box and yeah. you know he you know what he does um but it's you can't compare a comic vantage box to a um 700 box it's just yeah. you can't do that because comic vantage you know what you're going to get you're going to get one to two pretty decent hits that are going to give you your value and then you're going to get like three random books <laughs> you know completely random uh books and which i dig them i like those boxes i think they're fun um but when i buy them that's what they're for it's fun so let's kind of move into question six which is and i want to talk to you about this because you know you're kind of seeing a shift in some ways in the community you know even with mystery boxes um as well as the way people are selling and i know that you were one of the first people that i'm aware of in the community at least the, you know the community i'm aware of that started selling on whatnot. Like you yeah. were one of the first two ambassadors for whatnot. Um, talk to me about what led you there initially. And then I want to talk about like what you think the future of whatnot is and kind of how it's changing the game. Yeah. So I, um, I dabbled in some YouTube auctions. I know that myself, um, chubby pop chaser, uh, Taylor and, um, was there another one? I think even slotted up sometimes would, would get on there. And so we'd have a small little auction thing. Uh, it's tough. I mean, when, when you don't have, I, I think that's the thing too, is like when you don't have a big platform in the, or you don't have a big following in that aspect as a seller, I think like folks like the, um, like X-Men Mike, Adrian, those guys, they sold through, you know, Instagram before. And then obviously coming on at the height of all of the YouTube auctions that were going on. You obviously Chad, I used to watch Chad's, when he would do his weekly show, um, I bought numerous times from Chad, from Thorough, from Wink, um, added to my collection that way. Um, and I tried it and I was like, man, this is just, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to put it together. And when, I mean, at the time, I think it was, what was about February, March of last year, um, I was really where I'm like, I'm done with Funko Pops. I'm not really going to buy anymore. If, if it's something that comes out that I really want to get, I'll get it, but I'm done doing the mystery boxes for Funko Pops for the most part. So I wanted to sell them. I had a ton of them and I'm like, I need a, a place to sell them. So I would do Macari. Macari is always nice. Um, but then I came across whatnot. I saw, I think it was, I follow um, Dr. Applesauce, who's big in the Funko and now mm -hmm. into the cards, the Pokemon and uh, Meta Zoo. Um, so I'm like, oh, I'll check out whatnot. So I, I signed up. And then I applied to be a seller for Funko side. So I had to go through the whole interview process. I remember I was out to lunch with my wife. We were having lunch and um, I got a call from them and we talked to him and we went through the whole process. And I'm like, all right, cool. A month later was when they announced they were rolling out the comics. Because at that time, I think it was just Funkos. And then they were starting to do the cards. They were doing Pokemon cards. And then they rolled out comics. Um, so in that point, I talked to them and I'm like, hey, I would, I would really like to sell comics more because I have a ton of stuff I want to put on there. I'll still do some Funko Pop stuff, but I want to get into the comic book stuff. So I got grandfathered into the, the comic book stuff. So I don't have, I didn't have to go through the whole uh, talking to uh, Chancellor and stuff like that because I was already on the app selling. So I was grandfathered into the 
uh, comic book stuff. But yeah, I was one of the first comic book sellers, which was fun. It was it was a lot now. Whereas the future of it, I like it. I do a show every other week. Um, I was actually going to be doing a show um, on the the fifth, but we're going we're doing some family stuff, so I'm going to bump that back to uh, the twelfth of February, uh, and I'm going to do a cool little show. I'm going to do th- different stuff, and it, it's I think it's a great platform to help get rid of stuff versus you can do an hour show and and get rid of quite a bit of inventory you can even do mystery packs that's like one of the big things right now is people doing the mystery packs where if you're doing those you have to give like a a floor and a ceiling which i think is brilliant i think that way a person who's going to buy them you're you know you're knowing okay if if it's a price point it could be anywhere between fifty dollars to 150 dollars. all right cool i know i'm going to have some value that's going to be at least fifty dollars but the caveat of that is you'll have people that do shows and they're, they, they show what they're doing. Like the big thing is the Omni man, uh, the Tyler Kirkham invincible covers for Omni man and invincible number one, where those are like, Hey, we're going to do these packs. I can't remember who did it. I think it was, um, the comics vault. Uh, they did a show where that, and those packs were, you had a chance between, I think it was 500 and 1500 or like 250 and 1500. And those things were going for over a thousand dollars, every single one even after the big pool happened. So it's like, oof, that that's, that's crazy, but it's a way to kind of do it in, I don't want to say inventory dump, but give a, an opportunity to get rid of some stuff that doesn't fit in your PC that may be nice in another home. That's why I like doing my shows. I'll do sets where I'll do uh, like the Hulk one. I'll have a Hulk one, the one I got out of uh, comic Tom's box. And then I'll do like the second print. I'll put those together so that it's like, Hey, you're getting two Hulk ones, which is considered, or even like Hulk three, which is a considered a cameo key and stuff like that and doing little stuff like that. And the future for it, I think right now it's like the wild Friday nights are insane. There's at least probably 40 sellers just on the comic side. And I gravitate to sellers that I, I enjoy watching. Like Wink is one. I'll mm-hmm. watch his auction every Friday because he brings that intensity. He has yeah, he brings so much energy. Oh, t- ton, ton, that ton. I wish I wish I could bottle up a little bit of it right. and, and, and and borrow some uh because he's nonstop, but that's who he is. You know, it, he he puts on a little bit of a show, but that's you know, from conversations with this guy that we have uh because we've become friends uh through this uh that's who he is and and the crazy stuff that he does he just did a show where he had the bank the boardroom and literally the first lot that was won that was over 50 dollars won the grand prize that was on there that bankrupted the boardroom so it's crazy to see that stuff but seeing sellers that have fun that make it that make it enjoyable to sit there and hang out and not necessarily they're not pushing stuff down your throat um i think that's that's one of the things i think it's not going to go anywhere right now because there's no real you know competition sure people can still sell on instagram they're still doing youtube auctions but the availability of multiple sellers and now they have the desktop option where you can pull up the desktop and you can have five six shows running at one time and if you see a book that goes up be like boom jump right over to that stream and you start right. on it so it's i think they're they're trending in the right direction i think there is some stuff they have to work on cleaning up wise i think they are bringing in a lot of sellers and i think they really need i think there's got to be a little bit more of a focus on bringing in a buyer base as well sure uh, because that's that's where they could run into issues if you have 100 sellers and you don't have the buyer base to support those 100 sellers on one day it, it's tough i i know they want the more the merrier that's their philosophy hey the more shows the better you can jump between shows. You don't have to worry about these 18 other shows if you're watching too, but at the same time, you got to have the buyer base. No, you do. And I mean, because a lot of these people are starting their auctions off in a dollar, right? And if you haven't yeah. built a very big following as far as people that are coming to watch you, you could end up sh- selling a bunch of books for a buck. Well, after you pay their, probably their fee. Um, and then if you're shipping it, you know, packing it in the Gemini, you've made like seven cents, you know, yeah. if you, you know, if you sell it for a buck. So definitely I think the buyer base, that's what eBay has. Like I, I'm in my mind, believe that at some point eBay will buy them because they have the base and will do something similar uh, to what, because I think the, it's genius what whatnot's doing. 
um, as far as because everybody loves this community aspect of it, talking, the show, the entertainment. eBay, you're just going and looking, right? But right. people enjoy, and there's the gamble of it as far as getting on there and bidding, and you know it's competitive. Um, you know, you get some of that, but it's real time. You're not, you know, like bidding on an app or whatever. You're right. in there in a room with a bunch of people, like you're in an auction and bidding, and it's fun. So, but I, I think definitely, I think that's a great point. Building that buyer base is going to be the, I think, the key to their success, or people won't sell there because they can't make any money. Right. And and you've seen some people leave that say, hey, you know, I'm done, or leave specific nights because they realize, hey, the the amount of shows just isn't feasible. And when you get down to the to the to the bits and pieces of it, yeah, if you sell a book for a dollar, that's not a dollar book. Like, say you throw up, uh, even if you get a bunch of stuff from that Spider-Man booth, which are a lot of covers that are exclusive covers and stuff like that, that are ten, fifteen, twenty dollar books. That book sells for a dollar, and then, like you said, you're packing it in Gemini. You're actually losing because after their fees, without you packing and everything, you're at like sixty cents because it's an eight percent their fee and then obviously you have the two and a half the 2.9 percent uh paypal fee so you're at 10 almost 11 percent off of what you sell it for so i think at the end of it, it's like 60 something cents and then again you put it in a gemini depending on how you know how you, much you protect it if you if you're using a couple backer boards and stuff like that so it's it, it's it's tough so again that's where like some of these shows that start out you can get some steals on some stuff because they're like, oh, we're doing everything at a dollar. I've gotten off of that idea because I'll have a decent show. I'll have between 15 to 25 people. I don't have a, you know, again, I go with Saturday night, which is another tough night. Um, but that's like, that fits my schedule the best right, going, sure. going on a Saturday night. I can't do weekly shows just because one, then trying to have to pack everything and get it out within their two day turnaround time, which is what you're supposed to do. Uh, there's just no way because again, I work, I mean, I get up at four 30 in the morning, I'm off to work before seven. Uh, so I get home at six o'clock at night. There's no way I'm packing up <laughs> books right. uh, on top of everything else. So, um, I, I do the Saturday cause then Sunday morning I can get up, pack my stuff and get it in the mail by Monday. Uh, but I've started changing it to where I'll start at $3. I'll start mm -hmm. my, my auctions will start at $3 because yeah, you're not getting dollar bin books. You're not getting quarter books or 50 cent books. Um, if I'm going to do something like that, where I have, I have a couple short boxes of just dollar bin books that I may do like little lots together, start those at a dollar and do them for like 15 second sudden death timers, knowing that, Hey, I'm just trying to unload. Yeah, you're trying to move get, it. Oh, getting this stuff out of here, getting this out of here. And you know, that's where I'll start. Like I said, I'll start stuff at $3 because I, I may not get the following that some others get where their jump, their stuff will jump up over that value or hit their value. And that's the game you play too, though, is you may win big on one, but then you put a bigger book up. And I think that's where I think whatnot is struggling a little bit is to, to offer a place for someone to sell auction off big books, unless it's like the ones I see that are doing great are the really, really hot keys right now on the sellers that have good fan bases um, that have a nice buyer base that comes in where they've got 40 plus uh, buyers in their, in their auctions. Uh, but it's tough to move big keys on, on the app right now. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, so let's move on to question seven. Now, I've heard that you are really into Marvel trading cards and doing booster box battles <laughs> with them. When is your next box battle? Never, man. Never. He harasses me. I've got one box here that I still haven't <laughs> opened. Um, that, that is one thing. I, I did it. We were on who show? We were on. We were just on one of his shows, or it was one of his members-only shows, uh, Wink. And um, Jeff Service Smith came on and, you know, Jeff is a huge card guy uh, and we started talking about cards. So literally Wink and I went on to uh, to Dave's Dave's world and we bought each bought a couple boxes of the Marvel Age boxes. Now, I was like, I we did the box battle. I beat him. I'm like, yeah, that's it. I'm retiring. Want to know taking it that I'm going out on top. And <laughs> I just when it comes to that stuff, it's just it's it's fun but there's a lot of stuff I don't know what I'm looking at. So it's like, it's what the, the box battles are fun. So he, he does, he asked me, he's like, Hey, when are we doing another card show? When are we doing another one? I'm like, it ain't happening. 
<laughs> no, it ain't happening. No, I, you know, when I do these interviews, I, I hit people up that I know know <laughs> my guests pretty well. And he's yeah. like, dude, ask him this. <laughs> of, said, course, okay, of course, yeah, yeah. of course he would. Of course he would. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'll absolutely uh, be sure to. <laughs> no, <laughs> so that just really, it just, you guys did one box battle. He wants to do another one. And you're like, hell no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. That. I mean, I might. I mean, I probably end up doing them because um, they are fun. They're fun to do. <laughs> Um, but I'll do it to where I want to, I, I'm, I'm trying to do it to where I want to do it where I give back to the, if people are hanging out, I'm going to give stuff away. I'm going to probably yeah. give some of the cards away. Like, Hey, this pack, whoever wants this pack and I might lose my ass on it because it may be one of those parallel cards again, which I got one of the Wolverine ones that was over, was a $400 card out of that box. I'm like, well, I just bought four boxes by itself. I'm like, so that was great, but I might do something like that. It, it may end up happening. So if you're watching this, Alex, yeah, it may happen. It may happen. Oh, we'll we'll do it right here. Let's schedule it. Let's do it right here. I'll <laughs> even buy a box and we'll box battle together. Like, oh we'll, man, the pressure's um, on, Will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll have to do it. We'll do it. We'll do it in one of the. Maybe we'll do that as one of the Thursday night ones or one of the Sunday live streams. We'll we'll have to do that. Get a get a group of us in there and do a do like a three-way, four-way match or something like that. Like That'd it. definitely be fun, yeah. I like it. All right, so question eight. Now, you're a huge Thor fan. Mm -hmm. So, like, where did the love for Thor come from? Like, I I, I don't know. People give me a hard time because I love Superman, okay? Yeah. And I, I don't know, and maybe I'm wrong, but I never saw Thor as one of those characters that people just, like, love Thor. You know, it's usually Spider-Man, Hulk, or, you know, Wolverine, somebody like that. Like, yeah. where did the love for Thor come from? When I was younger, uh, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Oh, the yes. I had the helmet. Yeah. So that was like, ooh, Thor. And I and I was a little kid. I was like, I, I was crushing on that girl in the movie. I was like, well, that girl, she's very pretty and stuff like that. And who's this Thor guy? So then I, I you know, I, I was like, oh, I like Thor. And then the movies, the Marvel movies, really, I think Chris Hemsworth has done such a good job with the character. I agree. That, that got me into it. And I'm like, I don't know why. I just, I... And I'm, I've always had a fascination with storms. Being here in Florida, we've got the hurricanes, and I've always been drawn to those and had a had a fascination with them. Like, you know, seeing, I mean, again, the not just the devastation, but just the the vast of it, the 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 chaos of the storm. And I think that's what really made me like Thor so much too, is because again, being the god of thunder, you know, the the you know, do doing having the lightning and everything and getting into the comics, it just solidified it as man this guy's one of my favorite characters and then the uh, the characters in the world beta ray bill jane foster as thor you know and then getting into his later stuff so i really gravitated towards him and again coming in stark where i didn't grow up with comic books i didn't you know i had the, the movies are what introduced me really to, to the marvel universe and and uh and stuff like that and then now getting into stuff like moon knight and everything but yeah that's that's where it came was was originally my my love for thor started because of uh don't tell mom the babysitter's dead i love it man because that that is like i love that movie when i was a kid same mm -hmm. thing i think uh, it was an elizabeth shoe was the babysitter yeah right? yeah and uh and i crushed on her hard like i thought mm -hmm. she was the best and um and then when he was Thor, the dude in the garage, I agree a hundred percent. Like that was, that's funny yep. that you said that. Cause yeah, no, that makes sense. Do you like the cage run that he's doing now? Do you read it? I, I do like it. Um, I, I feel, I mean, I, I like the stories and, and that's the thing is I, I like, plus I like the artwork with uh, what I think it's what Nick Klein is doing the artwork right now for him mm -hmm. on those. Um, I feel like it got a little stagnant there. Um, uh, I feel people like, Again, just my personal opinion. It's going to be one of the things we talk about on the Thursday Thoughts is the – I feel like what's going on now with the God of Hammer and the whole first appearance thing with that feels a lot like the Black Winter. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it feels like that kind of feeling. But, no, I, I enjoy his writing. I like his storytelling. Uh, that's why I liked his Venom stuff. Uh, I'm enjoying crossover with what they're doing with crossover. So yeah, I'm I'm enjoying his story, but I like going back and reading the stuff. Uh, Jason Aaron's run was nice. I really like that, and uh, just going through the different times with the original run because that's like my goal right now is to collect the original run um, after the Journey in the Mystery stuff. So when it became Mighty Thor, I'm really working on filling that in and reading that stuff. Uh, I got the subscription up for the app so I can read them all and everything like that. So yeah, I, I, I enjoy it for the most part. Cool. Cool. Um, so question nine. So what are you into outside of 
the hobbies, right? Not Funko Pops, not, you know, trading cards, not comic books. Like, do you have any other hobbies um, that you do when you're, you know, or is it just who's got time? You work, hang right. out with your kids, and then do this stuff. Like, but is there anything else you dig? Um, I am a huge fan of B-rated horror movies. Uh, so, like, <laughs> I will... I will find the cheesiest movies that like one of my favorite channels um, going through college and, and through the, the two thousands. And as we've worked, it was, was a sci-fi channel because every Saturday they'd have their, they would have their marathons of movies. And then at night at like eight o'clock at night, they'd premiere their new sci-fi original movie. I would watch those like, they, it was, that was my drug was watching those is it just, I, I eat them up. You know, gremlins is one of my favorite all time movies. Uh, the, uh, ghoulies love all those movies. Critters can't wait. I know they're remaking that into something. I cannot wait to see that. So stuff like that, that B rated and just that cheesy horror movies. I love them. And in the eighties, that that's really something that gives me that eighties feel that I guess that would be more of outside of this hobby that I, I love that I'm, I'm attracted to. Cool. I love it. All right, man. Last question. Question mm. 10. All now, right. I know that Journey into Mystery is your all-time grail, right? Like, that is the holy grail. First Thor. Yeah. But are there any other grails, like anything that you're hunting this year, like anything that's on Will's list that you're going to try to grab this year? Yeah. So, I uh, I put out a video, um, the, the, the books that I'm hunting this year, and I realized as I've gone through this first month of the year, there's some of them that are a little bit obscure. Uh, like I, I being a huge Thor fan, I think like four of the books are Thor related. Uh, you got the prototype of Thor, which is uh, Tales of the Unexpected, number 16. I cannot find that book anywhere. I've even talked to a couple of collectors that are searching for me. Um, and hey, if you're watching this and, and you have a copy that you're willing to, to sell, hit me up on Instagram because that's one of the <laughs> books. Again, it's, it's not like huge key books right now or like m moment books. Some of them are, but like, the prototype of Thor, I'm looking for that. Of the prototype of Doctor Doom, um, I'm, I'm looking for that one. And then, like when Thor, the I know it's the first appearance of the Beetle, which is what Tales of Suspense or Strange Tales 123. Um, but it's also the issue where Thor says, "Avengers assemble," and and we know from the movies that's Captain America. So I kind of yep. like that that little thing of oh yeah it's actually though because it's my favorite character it's thor that says it so i want that book and again grade doesn't matter i'm gonna get them slabbed and i'm gonna have them in my collection just because of that feeling for me of what it represents for me um the big ones obviously moon knight now um with their for his first solo series like the uh marvel presents 28 um or marvel premiere i can't remember exactly which one it was which is his first and obviously werewolf by night that's like the grail right now that I'm chasing. And that book is becoming almost unattainable like yeah. some other ones because of the price point is just going up and up and up. Yeah. It just exploded. And, and then um, moon Knight number one, his first, you know, the, the first run back from the eighties, that was actually his solo title series. Um, I've grabbed a couple of those. Cause that was a copy that that was a book for some reason I never had because I never, again, moon Knight wasn't a character I really enjoyed. I really read until the new series came out that's currently running and I, I got issue number one and I was like, Oh, I really like this character. So now I'm going to start hunting these books and the obscure books. Like I have um, my daughter when she was little had cartoon network and you had adult swimmer uh, tsunami and uh, Afro samurai was one of the shows that I would sit there while she's sleeping. I'd be doing laundry and stuff like that. And I'd have it on the TV and I'm like, Oh, this is actually pretty cool pretty cool show i like samuel L. jackson and he voices the lead character so when i found out he had a comic book i was like oh wow what's his first appearance and i found out that it was this magazine style that again is another book i'll probably never find just because of its obscurity uh so i might have to change my list but like going for stuff like first um first theranos and eros because eros is going to be a a bigger character moving forward after the eternals movie uh, so you got what that Iron Man 55. So that's a book I'm chasing right now. Uh, Avengers 10, um, where the Avengers break up and stuff like that. Uh, those are the books right now that I'm chasing for this year. Cool, man. Brother, that's been 10 questions. What oh, a good man. Time. All right. Woo. Yeah. What a good right. well, it's, it's 10 <laughs> questions that turned into, you know, 80 questions. But it was, but it's 10 questions nonetheless. Yeah. So. 
but no, man, thank you so much for coming on. I had a blast. I, I had a oh. great time talking yeah. with you. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on, man. I again, I enjoy watching this, and the fact that you asked me to be on here, I said without a hesitation, yeah, definitely, let's do it. Well, I appreciate it, brother. So, guys, if you're watching this and you dig Will, you should. He's a big, lovable teddy bear. I love Will. Um, I'll link all his stuff down in the description below. I'll even find his whatnot. We'll list that there, too, so that you know where to find our boy. All right, guys, that's it. We appreciate you coming over and hanging out with me and Will for a little while today. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. This has been Teen Questions. Mm -hmm.